Hey guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guide. Thank you so much for joining me today. As you can see here, I have the brand new 150 set of the Durban Chromoflow coloured pencils. Now, if you cast your mind back to when the Durban Chromoflow first came out, there was a little bit of controversy surrounding the pencils because Durban released them in America first. Um, and for a lot of... A lot of people here in the UK that they were a little bit disgruntled about that and myself included with it being a, a UK company but the reason behind that was because um, Derwent wanted to compete against Prismacolor they wanted to bring out a pencil that was going to compete directly against the Prismacolor colored pencils and so releasing them first in America made sense when you think back about it because although color pencil artists worldwide use Prismacolor the vast majority of Americans grew up with Prismacolor as just their standard colored pencils going to school and that type of thing so yes while we all use Prismacolor American artists or not even just American artists but American uh, kids and stuff like that they know Prismacolor really well and so it was a good idea for Derwent to release them in America first. They, uh, American artists, American users could com compare the two pencils pretty well and give Derwent a good feedback. Now when this first happened, Derwent just released a 24 set and I think the 36 set, I'm not 100% sure, but it was, it was a small set. And I said at the time that if they were going to compete against a pencil like Prismacolor, they were going to have to come out with a much bigger set. Not too much later, um, Dermot released the 72 set. And with the. F bearing in mind that the vast majority of Derwent's sets stop at 72, when they brought out the 72 set, it was obviously a step up. It was, you know, a step up from the, 36, the 24 and the 36 set. It was good. There was a lot more colours now introduced into the set. And so the it made the chroma flow a lot more uh, desirable to colour pencil artists with having that 72 palette. But again, I mentioned in my review when I had the 72 set that I still thought 72 was too low if they're going to compete against the palette of 150, which is what Prismacolor um, offer. Now today, uh, the 15th of April, which is the official launch date for Derwent to bring out the Derwent Chromophile, they now have this beautiful 150 set. And i got to say, guys, I've been using these. I've done some artwork with them. I had a very, very short period of time to do all of this in. Um, but this, this palette, this set of pencils are amazing. And also, if you think back to whenever Derwent said that they were doing away with the 120 set of the Derwent Artist Pencil and bringing them down to just the 72 set, you know, again, I was a little bit uh, upset about that, a little bit sad that they were doing away with that palette because the 120 set of the Derwent Artist is a beautiful palette. Uh, there was a lot of really high light fast pencils that were going to be done away with in that in that extra 48 colors but now that they've brought out this 150 set of the Durban chroma flow um i think all is forgiven and i think that going forward this set along with um the likes of the Durban light fast these are two excellent sets that they have in their arsenal and then obviously whenever you think about it you know they they've got sets like the the Derwent color soft now i don't know what they're going to be doing with that because i i'm not 100 percent sure where the color soft would fit in with the Derwent chroma flow they're not exactly the same pencil but they are similar anyway let's I'm, i know you're dying to see the, the 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 palette the colors everything like that so let's dive in and we'll take a look at all of these different um sets all all these different colors So, as you can see here on the top, it just says uh, Derwent Chromoflow, Derwent Chromoflow, 
vibrant, blendable uh, color with smooth lay down. Now I'm not going to re be really talking too much about the 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 dynamics of the pencil. If you want to know more about how the pencil blends, how it layers, things like that, I have all that information on the the first two reviews that I did of the, the Dermachroma Flow. So I did a review for the, the 24 set and I did a review for the 72 set. In both of those videos, that's where I get into how the pencil blends and stuff like that. So if you want to know all of that information, I'll have links for those two reviews down below. So the top layer here is starting off with all your yellows and coming into the reds and the purples and pinks. Now, as we go into this review, I am going to be showing you the the full palette and then I'm going to show you what additional colours have been added to this set so that you can see exactly what colours are different. Remo when we remove the top layer, we come down onto the um, a few more purples, some really gorgeous dark purples. I'll talk about these in a second. Uh, a really nice selection of blues, uh, aqua, aqua greens, aqua blues, that type of thing, coming into the greens. Now, I know a lot of people are a little bit like myself. They wanted to see what the the greens were like in this and I have to say I'm I'm impressed with the greens I like the shades and the colors of the greens that they've uh, included in this set but as you can see here in any case with the middle tier you've got purples blues and greens and then on the bottom set we've got a few more greens coming into earth colors and then we come in into uh, a range of greys. And some of the greys that are in here are just gorgeous. Um, and then towards the end here we've got you know, the, the, the darker greys. Black, white and a couple of other colours. Uh, which we'll talk about. Okay, so this is the full 150 count. Now, you can see here a lot of, a lot of yellows. Uh, some really nice like um, oranges coming into your reds, nice deep dark reds up here around the top uh, and down here on this second row. Uh, we got some gorgeous colours here, Turkish Delight, Salmon, Ash Rose, I love those colours. Um, then we're coming into some more purples and pinks. Now traditionally as you know a lot of these pinks and purples and lavenders are are quite fugitive when it comes to the light fast rating but again I'll talk about the light fast ratings in just a second. Uh, a few light colours here as well, uh, lighter pinks like this oyster and rose pink. Next layer we've got some dark purples, dark uh, like heather colours coming into the really dark blues, uh, a couple of really nice light blues as well. Uh, next layer down here, again we're coming down into some more blues, some more aquamarines, these kind of greeny blues uh, and then into the greens. Now you can see here a nice range of greens, pastel mint, cactus, field grey is a nice one, um, pine green, basil, um, foliage, key lime. Next layer down, we've got some uh, a light olive here. Although it's called light olive, it's a really quite dark green. So there's there's two really dark greens in this set, which I like. And then there's some nice grey greens, again, which I, I personally like. Laurel green, which is a new one as well. Uh, then we start coming into the earth tones. Uh, we got some uh, like a Lincoln green pickle, mocha, oak. Dijon, saffron, mango, uh, coming up into the siennas, burnt sienna, uh, redwood, raisin, natural brown, willow, licorice, that licorice colour is just gorgeous, um, coffee bean, and then down at the bottom here, again, a lot of really gorgeous, nice colours. Now I've got a green down here at the bottom, that's just because when I was writing out the, um, the, when I was laying out this swatch sheet, 
I, I messed up and I missed one out. So I put the leaf green down at the bottom. But again, you can see here, this leaf green is really dark, really nice. Uh, but going along here, we've got some gorgeous, like, uh, red, reddy greys, pinky greys, uh, la lavender ash, red storm, almond frost, rose quartz, beautiful colours, carbon grey, um, slate grey as well, winter lake, really nice colours, gorgeous colours. And then we got our black and our white, silver and gold, and then right on the very end here we got two new colours as well, silver mint and ice blue. Uh, which are like metallic colours. Now this swatch was done on Dermot Lightfast paper. So I just wanted to show you what these colours were going to look like on uh, a really high quality paper. Which I, the, the Dermot Lightfast paper is. Um, but I think, so when I wanted to. So there's a, uh, 78 additional colours and I wanted to show you what those colours were separated from this particular swatch here. So let me just move this out of the way. Now you can see the additional colours. I've used um, Strathmore 300 series Bristol Vellum for this. So very different paper. Um, a much smoother surface but as you can see these pencils the the, the Durham chroma flow they work beautifully on on a smoother surface and on the Dermot Lightfast paper they are beautiful on that as well so there's and obviously I say that because the Dermot Lightfast paper is a little bit more textured it's a hundred percent cotton um, so papers that are a hundred percent cotton are going to give you a lot more durability a lot more um, ability to layer and uh, burnish and things like that without damaging the, the, the paper too much. Anyway, these are all the additional colours that are in the that have been added to the set. So as you can see here up at the top, a few more yellows, sienna gold, that's a beautiful colour. Um, Clementine, carrot, it's a it's a, a, a nice like burnt orange colour. This cardinal red, gorgeous. I love these two colours as well. Sangria and Shiraz. That Shiraz is a gorgeous deep purple colour. Turkish Delight and Ash Rose. I mentioned those when I was showing you the full 150 set. I love these two colours as well. Uh, down on the second one here we have uh, some like garish pink there. Uh, Jazz Berry. Rose pink is very, very subtle. Very subtle. This uh, dusky purple is gorgeous. It's almost black. But you, when you look closely at it, you can see it is there's, there is a purple in it. Midnight mauve, another beautiful. Deep rose, gorgeous, gorgeous colours. Uh, oyster. Now, the oyster is in the... If you remember, Derwent brought out a... a what they called a black and white set from the artist range. They were black pencils. They had three kind of like white blue pencils and then they had three white pink pencils. Uh, and Oyster was in among one of those. Light mauve, uh, French mauve is a gorgeous colour. Really, really nice colour that I like. Um, mauve. Down under the third line here, we've got this gorgeous dark purple. Uh, it, I know it looks like the dusky purple, but it's th there is a, d a difference to it when you, when you actually see it uh, in person. Um, I love this blue here as well, this one one four zero, and then if we go on here to the these two blues. I just think they're really perfect blues for uh, like a sky colour, like a summer sky. Santorini and Brilliant Blue. This blue yonder here as well, it's a gorgeous blue. It's a little bit like the Carolina blue, but the a little bit darker. Uh, sea blue, nice. This Orient and Mineral Blue, these are gorgeous like aqua blues. Then we come down to... The fourth line here, so we've got this Caribbean green. 
this laurel green is really nice it's like a gray green and then this field gray right beside it a little bit darker along the same lines as the laurel green but just a little bit darker uh, pine green mint leaf uh, olive yellow key lime spring bud jungle green then we've got this light olive and then we've got this leaf green, which I was telling you about. You can see there how dark the leaf green goes. Uh, same with the light olive. Even though it's called light olive, uh, it's still quite a dark colour. Uh, then we've got this Lincoln green as well. That kind of like falls into the same category as the laurel and the field grey. Oak, the saffron mango, that's a really nice colour. Uh, then right down at the bottom here, we've got these, uh, these new kind of like grey colours so we've got this licorice here which is like a what's the best way of describing it it's like a ready brown but like a really deep rich ready brown willow nice colour nutshell another nice colour I love these two colours here almond frost and rose quartz uh, and I love this winter lake colour as well this, I think this winter lake colour is just beautiful now these two colours here on the end this is silver mint and ice blue now i think they're supposed to be metallic colors and sometimes when the light hits them you can see a little bit of a shimmer off them but either way they're two gorgeous colors and two colors that can be you know utilized really well in artwork i love this silver mint because it has that greeny color to it and i think that would be nice in some botanicals but like I say, it's really difficult. Sometimes you can you can see the sheen off it and other times you can't. So I'm not 100% sure if Durbin have meant these to be two metallic colours because they lay beside the gold and the silver, which are obviously metallic colours, um, in in the tin. So I, th I think they are. But regardless regardless whether they're supposed to be metallic or not, they're two beautiful colours. So that's the that's the additional 78 colours. Now, what I also wanted to show to you is how many of these colours are present in, say, like the Dermot Artist or the Dermot Lightfast. So, in the Dermot Lightfast range, out of all of the colours in that range, there's 18 colours that are named the same. So there's 18 colours in the the light fast range that marry up with uh 18 colors in the derwent chromo flow 150 range let me just show you so this again this is the 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 full 150 count now sun yellow is a light fast color amber gold is a light fast color where's amber gold there it is there um Flame, scarlet, strawberry, oyster is a is a light fast color. Salmon, magenta, violet, denim, turquoise green, pine green, and basil. So the the pine green and the basil are light fast colors in name only with the pine green because the pine green in the light fast range is much much darker than the pine green here. Uh, Mind you, having said that, in the light fast range, it's just called pine. In the chroma flow range, it's called pine green. So they are named differently, but you would expect them to be the same. Uh, foliage is the same, grass green, natural brown, and the platinum. Platinum's this grey colour here, right down at the bottom. And then in the Derwent Artist range, uh, out of the 120 set in the Derwent Artist range, there is uh, six colours that marry up with six other colors here the ash rose pink sorry ash rose rose pink turquoise green light blue grass green and fell mist i know that probably that information is probably not really relevant for a lot of people but i just wanted to include that information in there so in terms of light fast i don't normally talk I'll have all of the light fast information. I'll show you all of the colors and all of the um, like w which colors are, are rated, which number and stuff like that over on my written review. If you go across to the written review, you'll be able to uh, see the colors 
and what what their light fast rating is. But I'm sure a lot of you will be able to decipher from what, what I'm about to tell you. So out of 150 colours, don't forget this is a blue wool system. So it's not rated the same as the light fast system because the light fast system is uh, the ASTM and that's rated LF1, 2 and 3, that type of thing. The blue wool is rated 8 to 1, uh, 8 and 7 being the most light fast and 1 being the least light fast. So out of the 150, there's 49 of them, 49 colours rated 8, 39 rated 7, uh, 16 rated number 6, uh, 24 rated 5, there's uh, 6 colours are rated 4. There's five colours rated three. There's ten colours rated two. That's all up around your pinks and purples here. Uh, and then there's one colour rated one. So I know a lot of artists. I know a lot of you that, that sell your own work uh, will only use LF1 or 8. Uh, in which case you got 49 colours there that you can use. But then I know there's some other artists that will go to 6. So 8, 7 and 6. In which case you're going to have about 103 colours that you're going to be able to use um, for your original artwork. But that's like I said, that's with life fast ratings 8, 7 and 6. So it just all depends what, you, what you're comfortable you going to whenever it comes to selling original pieces um i don't really think that the derwent chroma flow out of all of the the sets that derwent release i don't think that derwent chroma flow is necessarily aimed at your color pencil artists that's why they have the derwent light fast set so the derwent light fast set is is for your color pencil artists same with the derwent drawn set out of the derwent drawn set and the 24 set i think all of them are rated eight except for one i could be wrong but just off the top of my head i, th I think all of them are rated eight except for one um the derwent light fast range again that is all for your your you know your your color pencil artists people that are go going to be selling their original work or putting it in a gallery or something like that or putting it into competitions derwin chroma flow of course an artist can use like you know a, a, like a, a fine art color pencil artist can use your derwin chroma flow you're still going to get great artwork done with them but obviously you've just got to consider the light fast ratings other than that students using these or colored pencil artists i mean the derwent chroma flow because they have that soft core they are um available they're going to be a really nice choice for so many different types of artists on the uh, issue of um the quality control of the derwent chroma flow now I, when i first got the 24 set I, out of the 24 set I had about five or six pencils that just kept breaking and couldn't and and the the big problem was actually uh, sharpening them with a handheld sharpener the, there's something about the wood that they used for the barrel uh, I don't know what it is I don't know what the difference is in it um, but the wood that they used in the barrel it was almost like it was um, very very soft and so when you tried to sharpen it with a handheld sharpener you you weren't getting very good results it was snagging on the blade and stuff like that but where but if you used a hand or sorry a hand crank sharpener the results were much better um when i got the 72 set i had a few issues with uh core breaking but not many out of this 150 set, I've had one pencil that is, um, the, the core has broke on sharpening. And then when I've sharpened it again, it's been fine. So that that's not a bad result. And I sharpen every single pencil b before I swatch it. So all 150 pencils were sharpened and not one of them. Now I did use a hand crank sharpener. I didn't use a hand tail sharpener. So here's the thing. Many of us color pencil artists... Or uh, hobbyists and stuff like that. We all love 
the soft chord pencils like Prismacolor. They give us, you know, really rich, vibrant colours instantaneously on the page. You don't have to do a lot of layering and stuff like that with them to get those colours. But um, that comes at a price. And that price is, no matter what company it is, when you start going into soft cores, soft a soft core pencil, there are going to be issues with sharpening and breakages. It's just it's just the nature of having that type of a core. There's it's got nothing to do with the company that's made it, that they've made it wrong or anything like that. It it's just the way the ingredients work, the binding, all of that. It's like when you get pastel pencils. Pastel pencils, you are a nightmare to sharpen using a sharpener, sharpener, a handheld sharpener. And the reason why that is is because the 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 binding agent and stuff like that in the core of pastel pencils and the fact that it's a powdery pigment just means that sharpening it that way is futile you're always going to have breakages you you're going to waste so much of the pencil and so that's why you will see many many pastel pencil artists will use a craft knife to sharpen them i'm not suggesting that you need to go down as far down that route for the chromophile pencils pencils like i've just said 150 of these pencils that i've sharpened in the hand crank sharpener and only one of them has broke and like i say even then when I put it back into the sharpener, when I took the core out and uh, the the break, the the broken tip, when I took the broken tip out, put the pencil back into the sharpener, it was all fine. Now I have done some artwork with this, and I'm actually really quite pleased with the results of the artwork. So there's an image popping up on the screen here. As you can see, it's this uh, kingfisher. Now I love trying to draw kingfisher um, birds. I'm not a big ornithologist or anything like that, but I do love the Kingfisher. I think the colours on them are just gorgeous. So i seen this image and I wanted to draw it because I wanted to put the background in this, these gorgeous yellows um, in contrast with the deep, rich oranges and the turquoise blues of the Kingfisher and the darker blues of the Kingfisher as well. And... I think the Chroma Flow pencils are just perfect for this type of drawing. You can see how bright and vibrant the drawing is. Uh, and that was also done on Derwent Lightfast paper. So, you know, in terms of layering and blending and burnishing and all those other things, the Chroma Flow pencils are just perfect for it. And as I've shown you before, um, whether it's on a high quality paper like the Durban Life Fast paper or whether it's on the Bristol Vellum paper which I created the uh, additional 78 colours on um, these pencils just work beautifully and also if you go and you look um, I'll have an image popping up of what they look like on dark paper but I haven't done this with the pencils out of this 150 set I did it with the 24 and 72 um set review so you can but you can see there how bright and vibrant that the the pencils are on darker paper as well so with regards to uh sets and prices i'll have all of that over on the uh written review of the art gear guide the prices are you know listen when you go to the the Derwent store you are going to pay more than what you would will do if you go to somewhere like amazon or ebay or uh, you know other stores like uh, Jackson's or Dick Blick's or whatever store it is that you go to that stock Durham products you probably find that they will be a little bit cheaper than what you'll find on the in the actual Derwent store um, but I say this all the time it's important that you just look around set sizes as well they have changed a little bit but again I'll have them over on the the uh, written review not only have they got this 150 set, they have a 100 set as well, which is excellent. And I think this is really good for, for Derwent. I think they're moving in the right direction. Um, if we cast our mind back, Derwent used to, all of the pencils that they had 
with the exception of the Durban Dardis, stopped at 72. And when you're competing against, you know, like the, the Karen Dash ranges where they had the Pablo and stuff like that at 120 or the Faber-Castell 120, a lot of people are going to go to those bigger sets. Uh, but now that Derwent have, you know, come out with the 100 set of the Derwent Lightfast and now this 150 set of the Derwent Chromaflow, I think this 150 set of the Derwent Chromaflow is going to be a fantastic move for Derwent. And hopefully, you know, they, they will see what type of um, sales this brings in for them because of this extra big set. And who knows, maybe they might even later down the line try and increase the Dermot uh, Life Fast range up to 150. Add another 50 colours into that. That would be excellent. Or maybe even increase the, the, the Dermot Drawn set by a little bit. I think increasing the Dermot Drawn set would be a little bit difficult because I think what makes that set so unique is the colours that's inside it. And I think having it you know, the 24, increasing it is just going to make it look like any other set. But that's just my opinion. Um, if you would like, if I've missed anything, just ask me in the comment section down below, guys, and I will do my best to get back to you and answer the questions as soon as possible. Um, also, if you have used Chromaflow, if you love them or you don't like them or anything like that, uh, Share your experience in the comments section down below. Let's get a bit of a conversation going. We can talk about these pencils and tell me what you think um, of this new 150 set. What do you think this is going to do for the, the Chromaflow range and colour pencil artists in general? And um, like I said, I'll have a links. I'll have links for the different prices. Now, the links I have for the, the set prices will be for Amazon. Um, and I always, when you when you click on those links, you can be assured that it's sending you to the cheapest f set that I can find on Amazon. And like I've said in the past, I always go over these links and make sure that they're still the cheapest uh, on Amazon. So you can be assured that any links that you click on the Art Gear Guide that take you to Amazon... Are going to be taking you to the cheapest sets that are available on Amazon. I think that's really about it guys. Um, I was super excited to get this set. And I have to thank Derwent for it as well. You know they can't. I got in contact with Derwent. And they were. You know they had this set sent out to me within a couple of days. And I, I was just over the moon when I got the set. Uh, I've had to obviously wait until today. Till Monday the 15th of April which is absolutely fine because when Derwent have brought out things in the past that I've been privy to uh, which is a privilege and an honour to be privy you know to be privy to anything that a company like Derwent is doing I always keep my mouth closed until the release date because it's important I think it's important uh, company puts a lot of work into these products and it's uh, I think it's important that we tool the line and do what Derwent are asking us or any other companies asking us to if they have an official launch date. Uh, don't forget guys, if you've liked this video, if it's been helpful for you or anything like that, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Um, that will also mean that in the future when I do giveaways, of which there will be a few more coming up very, very soon, uh, there might be a Derwent Chromaflow 72 set coming up in a giveaway soon so if you want if you're interested in those types of things subscribe to the channel that way you will get a notification and you will be in you know you're not going to miss out on a, a giveaway also if you like i say if you've liked this, this video if it's been of benefit to you or anything like that please give the video a like that helps the channel it helps the video get seen by more people and helps the the channel grow which is uh, me just means that more people can come and see these reviews and get the same information that you're getting. And also, like I said, the comment section, in my opinion, is where the the value is for the Art Gear Guide channel. When you guys all start talking in the comment section and you start sharing your experiences and your knowledge of 
whatever product it is that we're talking about. I personally think that's where the value is in these videos. It's you guys putting all your stuff down in the comment section and getting conversations going. That for me is so important. Anyway guys, thank you very much. Don't forget, any questions, leave it in the comment section down below. I will do my best to get back to you. If you don't want to leave your question in the comment section, if you've got something to ask me that might be a little bit personal or whatever, and you would rather uh, email me, the email my email address will be down below. It's just simply theartgearguide at gmail.com. So you can do that as well. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I also put I put up things like personal things like, you know, my dog and going for walks and things like that on Instagram. So if you're interested in following what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. That's it, guys. Thanks very much. I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video. Bye.